Hi, I'm Jennifer with Sublimely Align, and today I'm going to talk to you about sitting because sitting has a lot of buzz in the media these days, and I feel like people are either overwhelmed and aren't really sure what to do the, with the information, or they are gung-ho and they go ahead and make a big change and they start to do something like stand all the time. So I want to tease out an element that I feel hasn't been teased out well within the articles I've read. And then I'll give you some ideas about sitting. So what people tend to take away is that sitting is bad. And it's not so much that sitting is bad as much as it is the frequency with which we sit in the same joint configuration. So what that means is that we spend a lot of time sitting in our modern day lifestyle and we tend to do it in the same way. So the chair that we sit in for our meals looks very similar to the chair that we sit in for work, which looks similar to the chair that we sit in to help our kids with homework or relax or the seat that we sit in to commute to work. So one of the key things you can do to change um, the outcome of this sitting for you is to change your joint configuration. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. But I just want to say, sort of the overarching message, is that you don't want to exchange one still position, which happens to be sitting for most of us, with another still position, which might be some people who are gung-ho and have gone ahead and now they stand all the time. So in either case, you want to make sure that you are moving regularly, that you're interjecting um, sort of regular uh, nuanced moves or loads to your day. So before I show you some things with um, in terms of chairs, these are just ideas. I do want to preface this by saying um, you may not be able to access all the positions that I'm showing you, and that's fine. Just start to think about variations of this or other movements that you can achieve. And the second thing is that the environment as well as your wardrobe is going to determine when you can do uh, the positions that I show you. So you're not always going to be able to do all of them, and I realize that. So we often sit in a chair with our knees and hips at 90 degrees, and it looks something like this. So all we have to do to start to make a big change for our tissues and our systems is to move a little bit and switch it up. So you might choose to have one foot under the pelvis and sit here. And if you're wondering when to change this position, it's a great, um, great tip is just to change it when your body prompts you that you're no longer comfortable in this position. Make sure that if you do anything with one side of your body that you're going to mirror or do it with the other so that you're not um, lopsided at the end of the day. So you want to switch it up. You can try a figure four position. And again, make sure you're switching up the legs. Um, you can do positions that not only um, you might do in the chair, but you can access on the floor if you're able. So uh, you can sit with both feet under your pelvis if you can, and your wardrobe and environment permit. You can also do this position on the floor and put your workstation on the seat of your chair. If you're able to do a kindergarten cross, that's a great one to add into your seated position. Um, or variations, I'm not quite in a kindergarten cross here. There's all sorts of variations for crossing the legs over. The other thing you can do is sit on a prop on your chair. So this is a half dome and you can either sit on the rounded side of the half dome or you can flip it over and sit on the flat side of the half dome. I'm going to show you what it looks like to sit on the flat side of the half dome. Uh, the nice thing about this is you can get into a neutral pelvis pretty easily. And it also kind of prompts a little bit of movement, which is great. So uh, this is sort of neutral pelvis for me. And I find that I see a lot of, and you may recognize this in yourself or your colleagues or your family, I see a lot of this. So that's the nice thing about the half dome. The other thing you can do is use any type of ball. Um, so the backs of the upper leg, the hamstrings, tend to be shortened when we sit. And they tend to get very little blood flow when we're still for a long time. So another thing you can do is just take, here are two yoga tune-up balls in a uh, mesh case. 
but you can make a very uh, cheap version of this by getting tennis balls, squash balls. There's also high bounce kids balls that work really nicely. You can put that in a sock or nylon and then you can sit on that to the extent that you're it's un not uncomfortable. You can either sit and hold this or you can sit uh, and periodically move it up or down the leg. Or if you're on the phone, you might even be able to roll or doing something that's the movement's not going to be a problem. You might even be able to roll around on it. And what this does is just get blood into the tissues of the back of the leg, which would normally be just sort of sitting there, very inactive. Of course, you can do any of these things on the floor. Um, but the other thing I like to encourage is that you consider if your environment permits, so if you're working from home or you're, you've got a progressive environment or you just want to be a pioneer because um, you're going to start to see a lot more of this. I'm not sure exactly when, but if you want to pioneer this, you can start to think about other ways to sit and using the floor to sit on is great, but you might want to um, use a stability ball. I know that's not very new, or a BOSU, you might want to try sitting on a block, or a bolster. Um, if you find that any of the tissues in your body feel tense when you're on the floor or in any of these positions, then you want to switch up or avoid them, so you really want to listen to your body. But if you're on the floor and you like the idea of maybe sitting on the floor at times, but you find being right on the floor too much, you can prop yourself up. And this may not be enough, but just as an example, you can sit the half dome on top of the bolster. In terms of joint configurations, don't forget the abduction option. Abduction is the legs apart. It's a great one to add in as well. So um, while you may not be able to access all of these positions. The idea the, to take away is just that it's about varying the joint configuration regularly. Um, I recommend that you use your body's cues like something being uncomfortable or needing to move as a great way to cue you to change up your position. And um, as much as you can think a little bit outside sitting in a chair, um, it's going to be helpful. So perhaps when you're at home with the kids, instead of plunking down on the sofa, you get down on the floor or on some sort of a prop. And while these may seem like small modifications to your position, um, they are going to make or yield huge changes for your tissues and systems um, and really speak to what the research is recommending in terms of keeping movement into your day or some of the things that the research is recommending. So if you can come up with any other seated positions, let me know. Um, I feel like I was a bit stale in terms of different options. I'd love to hear from you for that or with any questions.